In today's video, we're going to look at a fascinating counting problem that illuminates an interesting surprise about Pascal's triangle that we're going to see at the end of the video. And this surprise is going to come from counting our particular problem in two completely different ways. So here's the problem setup. Suppose you have a bunch of individuals in our room, and they're all labeled by these dots right over here. And these individuals notice that the room has seats. These are all the seats here. And each individual has a particular preference, and the preference happens to be labeled by these black edges. So this individual prefers these two shares, whereas this individual prefers one of these three shares. The goal is to assign seating so that every single person is assigned to a chair that is one of their preferences. So for example, we see this in the pink right over here. So this individual is matched with this chair, whereas this individual is matched with this chair, and this individual is here is mapped with this chair right over here. And we see all of these different matchups all over here, and this is one way to the assignment. The question is, how many ways are there to actually go about doing this? And again, we're going to approach this in two completely different ways. To start, we're going to make an observation about the way seat assignments have to happen. So imagine at some point you assigned a person to this seat right over here that's on the right to them in the diagram. And say the same thing happened to the person just to the right of them. I claim this situation is not possible in this diagram. Let's see what could go wrong. So if we look at this person, they no longer have the option of being matched to either of these two chairs. So they're forced to be matched to the chair to their right. And this cascades on until we're at the end and stuck with this last person who can't be assigned a chair whatsoever. So it couldn't have been the case that we had exactly two chairs in a row that were assigned to two people who were in a row in this diagram as well. As a consequence, if we have a pairing like this, then the only other possibility is that we have this x right over here. So another way to put this is in our assignment of people to chairs, we're going to have a diagram that consists of a bunch of these straight edges going down together with a bunch of x's. And so that's going to help us with our particular account. So in this particular pairing, we have in our diagram four straight lines and then three x's. There are other assignments in which we could have three x's as well. For example, we could have an x here and then an x between these two with a straight line vertical here, straight line vertical here, and then maybe one more x and then two straight lines. So a question to ask when we start counting is to think about this in a methodical way and say how many ways are there to make pairings where we have exactly three of these x's. So if we have three of these x's, then the number of straight lines we would have is four. So we can think of this as filling seven slots and choosing three of them to have x's in them. And then the other ones are forced to have straight lines. For a total of seven, choose three ways to do this. Okay, so now we have the start of our counting. We can think, okay, what if we instead had k x's? In that situation, the total number of points we have here in general is 10. But overall, if we replace 10 with a random number, it would be n. And if we have k x's, the number of vertical lines we'll have is, well, there's in total n pairings that we need, and the x's each account for two pairings, so it would be n minus 2k. Okay, so the total number of slots we would have is the number of x's plus the number of 1's, which is the total of n minus k slots to fill. In our example, we had 7 slots, and so the number of ways to fill with exactly k x's is going to be n minus k, the total number of slots, choose k. So this is the number of ways to fill with exactly k x's and n minus 2k 1's. Now the number of x's we can have ranges. We could have 0 x's, 
1x, 2x, we could have 3x's like we have in this situation, but we can never have more than half as many x's as there are people, or equivalently, seats. So, in total, the number of x's range from 0x's to the floor of n over 2. And so, we get n minus k choose k, adding from k equals 0 to the floor of n over 2 as our total count for the number of ways to do this. Now, this is cool, but it's not an extremely satisfying formula because it's not in a closed form. However, it still gives us access to the number that we're interested in. Now we're going to count this in a different way that will establish exactly what this number is explicitly. And then we'll see as a consequence that this interesting sum right over here can be expressed in a totally different way in terms of something that's actually familiar. Now that we know in pairings that we have to have x's in straight lines, we can actually approach this problem in a completely different way. Let's let a sub n be the number of ways to do our matchings when we have n people, and similarly, n seats. Okay, so for example, a sub 1, we only have one person in one seat, and so we're forced to match that person with the seat, so a sub 1 is 1. And similarly, we only have two choices for a sub 2. If we add another person, we could match that person with the second seat, or we could have done the matching this way. And so a sub 2 is 2 itself. Okay, so what is a sub n in general? So we can think about how we actually start our matching. Our matching starts either with one of these straight lines or with an x. Now, if it starts with a straight line, we have to match the remaining n minus 1 people to the n minus 1 seats. And the number of ways of doing that is actually a sub n minus 1. Similarly, if we start with an x, then we have to match the remaining n minus 2 people. And so we get that the number of ways to do that is a sub n minus 2. And so for n at least 3, we have that a sub n is a sub n minus 1 plus a sub n minus 2. If we start actually expanding and computing these numbers, we'll get exactly the Fibonacci sequence. Every number is the sum of the two numbers before it. Okay, so this begs a question. The Fibonacci numbers now count this number of matchings. But at the same time, we had a formula for this in terms of the sum of binomial coefficients. So doesn't that mean those two things are the same? Yes, indeed it does. And we can actually see this by looking explicitly at Pascal's triangle. So for example, when n is 2, we'll get 2 choose 0 plus 1 choose 1. And that's this diagonal right over here. When n is 3, we'll get this sum here. And n is 4, we'll get this sum. And so... The sums we're seeing on the right-hand side are actually all sums of these diagonals of Pascal's triangle. If we look at the explicit writing of these numbers over here, we can actually start adding them up and notice this interesting trend. We have 2, 1 plus 2 is 3, and then 1 plus 3 plus 1 is 5. Here we get 8, and 13, etc. And so this actually is a formula for the Fibonacci numbers in terms of binomial coefficients. And we got that completely by looking at things combinatorially.